limit of 3n squared plus 5n over 5n squared plus 3 is equal to 3 fifths and we're going to do it formally in other words with an epsilon n proof so extremely formal so first step let epsilon greater than 0 be given it's always the first step of an epsilon n proof because it's a universally quantified statement next part was an existential that we had to find an n so we're going to choose n and I already did some pre-work so I'm just going to go through the argument here but it turns out that n equals to 1 over epsilon works for us so we're going to choose n to be equal to 1 over epsilon if you want to see the argument for this or how I did the scratch work we can either make another video or you can come into office hours to check it out okay now the next part was that implication that we're going to have to show so we will assume that n is bigger than capital N and now we're going to try to prove what we need to show right so now we're going to notice and work with the expression 3 n squared plus 5 n over 5 n squared plus 3 minus the supposed limit which is 3 fifths so that's our SN minus S and we're going to show that this is really 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 small smaller than epsilon is our goal so if we get common denominators here and combine the fractions 5 times the numerator on the left would be 15 n squared plus 25 n and then the 5 n squared plus 3 times the minus 3 would be minus 15 n squared and then minus 9 all over the two bottom pieces multiplied together which is 25 n squared plus 15. All right, so that's my numerator and my denominator and we're smashed into one fraction. Now I got some cancellation here. I can cancel out 15n squared and 15n squared. So it looks like what we're left with is in the numerator 25n minus 9 and in the denominator 25n squared plus 15. Okay, now a handful of arguments. So we don't need to worry about this being negative because since n is a natural number n is at least one so the numerator is clearly going to be positive bottoms definitely positive so we don't need to worry about the absolute value secondly I'm going to put a bound in here so instead of working with the expression that I have I'm going to put something that's actually larger than the expression that I have to do that I'm going to make my numerator bigger I'm going to make it be 25 n and notice that's certainly larger because on the left hand side we're subtracting 9 so 25n is not subtracting anything it's clearly larger and in the bottom instead of using 25n squared plus 15 I'm just going to use 25n squared because my argument on the denominator is I made my denominator smaller by ignoring the plus 15 and thereby my fraction has become larger okay back in the blue so that was the jump that I had to make there but now notice that this is just the same as, well, 25's cancel, n's cancel, so it's really just a 1 over n. I know that that's smaller than 1 over capital N from my assumption, because capital N was smaller, so 1 over capital N becomes larger. This is exactly the same as 1 over 1 over epsilon, because of the choice that I made for capital N, and that, of course, is exactly equal to epsilon. So I ended up showing that this expression is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we need in order to complete the proof.